I'm Yanis Simonidis. Welcome to Illuminations. Today we continue with Holy Cross Live, our cycle of programs videotaped on the beautiful campus of Hellenic College Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology in Brookline, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Holy Cross Live is designed to introduce you to the basic teachings of Orthodox Christianity through discussions with clergy and lay theologians who teach here. Today's program is Working as One, Clergy and Laity. And our guests are His Grace Bishop Methodius of Boston, President of Hellenic College and Holy Cross, and Dr. Luis Patsavos, Professor of Canon Law and Director of Field Education at Holy Cross. Thank you for being with us in this nice program. You. Your Grace, let's start with something basic. Let's start by describing the structures of the local parish and its membership. Each local parish is the church, the body of Christ, and it's comprised of a, the parish priest who is the leader of the community and the laity that are entrusted to his spiritual care. Now the laity in the community are represented administratively in the parish by a parish council, which is elected by the general assembly of the community. The priest is a member of that parish council. <clears throat> He's not a voting member of it, but he is a member of the council and he works uh, cooperatively uh, with the laity for the projection of the faith and the purpose of the church, which is the salvation of human souls. So we have the parish priest and the council, which represents the faithful. Uh, now, what are the relationships? What is the relationship between the priest and the council? Is it uh, different than the priest and the parish priest and the faithful as a body? No, as a, uh, uh, the parish council represents the um, the uh, uh, faithful in the community. In, in the administrative ministry, which is a very important ministry of the church. And they work, as I said, with the priest uh, for the purposes of the church. And the purpose of, the, of that local community is the salvation of souls, the pro projection of our faith, um, uh, the sacramental life, and, and all of the laity on the parish council uh, uh, help the priest to realize that goal. And they share the ministry of the church. The, laity, the only thing the laity cannot do, the only ministry that they cannot share is the sacramental ministry. But every other ministry uh, in the community is, is a shared ministry. In other words, um, the, catechetical, the catechetical ministry, the, the Sunday schools. Uh, while, the, while the parish priest, because of his education, may give guidelines and certainly holds meetings with the Sunday school uh, staff, there's no reason at all why one of the members of the parish council can't take that as a personal ministry to help oversee the Sunday school program. And another member of the parish council can help the priest with the youth ministry. And another member of the parish council can help with the senior citizens and the hospital ministry. All aspects of, 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 what a pre, of priestly life, all aspects of a community life have to be shared. Or parochial schools. The, 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 the parochial school, if there is a parochial school, the, langu the Greek language and cultural school, um, the uh, young adult league, uh, uh, young adults in the community. May, there may be somebody in the parish council that has been trained especially for one of these ministries and, and, and contributes his time and his, uh, and his expertise to the community in a particular area. Now, in I, I, yes. I would like to uh, uh, highlight uh, what His Grace just said because I think that this is especially important for us to understand that the priest cannot be uh, all things to all people and so this is where the laity is uh, so important in the life of the parish because uh, through this cooperative effort, the laity um, is sort of the extension of the priest, uh, assisting him in all of these aspects of ministry. But the laity participates in all aspects of ministry except the, the sacramental uh, ministry. There, however, by actively participating in the worship life of the church and by participating in the sacraments, uh, one can say that uh, the laity does, in fact, have a role in the sacramental life of the church as well. And also theologically, uh, without the presence of the laity, the priest right. cannot even celebrate the sacraments or the, the liturgy. Right. That's an interesting point that a lot of people may not know, that a priest alone mm -hmm. right. cannot hold the liturgy and, and in monastic situations, though. No, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are monks uh, 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 present at the sacrament. 
But those that are uh, the, the ascetic monks, the ones the that live by themselves? Yes, but they come down to the, to ah. the, uh, to the closest uh, they do. monastery. So the little the churches, uh, sorry for the parenthesis, yes. but this is interesting. Uh, the, the little churches, they carve on the, the little chapels, they carve on the rocks, and they are right next to where they live. They, those they can little, pray there, but not hold. Not, right. not hold the divine liturgy. I understand. No. Now, uh, may, yes, I, may I, yes, uh, uh, with what uh, Lewis just said, and very correctly, the laity certainly participate in the in the in the sacramental life. Uh, again, if there's uh, if there are laity in the community, uh, blessed with um, uh, good voices, they, they they help participate in the choir or or in the chanting ministry or or help with the. Uh, with the custodial duties in the community. In other words, this is a, a body. Yes. And it's just as every, as St. Paul described the church as the body of Christ, every member is a member of that body and, and helps in the, in the, in the, in the community, uh, in the community life. Now, in an ideal situation, <clears throat> and in the larger picture of the, the, the conciliar aspects of orthodoxy, one would expect that there's harmonious give and take and, and, and leadership in, in uh, is, is shared, but in, in real situations now, in education, whether it is uh, uh, lay education or theological education, religious education, or the, 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 the ministries mm -hmm. uh, and, and the youth and the choirs and, and all that, there, what is the relationship there? Who, who dictates or rather who inspires, who motivates, who leads uh, the, 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 the very delicate issues of what ought to be done and should be done, uh, not be done. Uh. Well, I, I would say, uh, and this is of course what uh, our church teaches, um, that the, the priest who is authorized by the bishop to um, perform all of the aspects of the ministry in the parish is entrusted with this responsibility. Uh, we, we say that the, the clergy, the bishops first and foremost, and the presbyters are the teachers uh, of the faith. The laity um, are the guardians of the faith. Uh, in other words, they recognize what in fact is authentic and obviously they have to be themselves instructed in the faith and living the faith to uh, understand that. But um, uh, presupposing that that is the case, the laity recognizes when something is not authentic and can then uh, bring it to the attention of the, the, uh, the bishops uh, for intervention. But the amazing thing about the Orthodox Church is that when a person um, has the, the necessary uh, qualifications, uh, is entrusted with sacred responsibilities, such as my responsibility in this institution. I am a layman, and mm -hmm. yet I think uh, I have one of the, the, the most uh, awesome responsibilities, training young men uh, in the canonical tradition of our church, uh, which of course is the basis for church structure and church administration. So we see that within orthodoxy, the laity is called to very significant roles when they have the proper training to do so. And, and in the parish, uh, as, as Lewis said, the, the laity work with the priest, you really look to the parish priest to be the one that gives the tone for the community. All uh, aspects. I would, I would say mm -hmm. so. He, he is the one that inspires the community. Again, the, we have to go back to what, we are, what are we here for? Th that Greek Orthodox community, where, whether it's in Dubuque, Iowa, or, or Lewiston, Maine, or uh, somewhere in Alabama, the purpose of that community is to lead people to salvation. And if we accept that, then it is the priest that, that inspires all aspects of the ministry uh, through his sermon, through his, through, his, uh, through his teaching, through his motivating of people to get involved in the church. Now, again, that leadership does not mean that he is going to be doing all aspects of the ministry, but he's, he's inspiring people to come together as a community to, to uh, uh, grow in the image and likeness of, of Christ every day. I think our communities look to the priest for leadership. They want a leader, they don't want a follower. They want a spiritual father who's going to lead them, uh, a true friend in the yeah. sense that Christ spoke about friendship, but not a buddy. 
Right, and then as you are fond of saying, that carries a certain amount of responsibility. That's so, right. you know, the, the, if he's going to have the responsibility of that leadership, he also has to be accountable and, 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 right. and be qualified. Right. Um, talking about this, what is, can you tell us a little bit about the relationship between parish priest and the diocesan bishop, the bishop he's well, accountable to? Well, the parish priest, uh, as you say, is accountable to, to the bishop for, for, the, for the life of the community. Uh, yearly, he reports to him uh, in, in writing about the activities of the parish. Uh, the bishop uh, visits the community as many times a year as possible. And every time he goes, he oversees what is happening in the community and tries to encourage the priest in a particular ministry that may not be developing as, as much as the bishop would like and the archdiocese would like. But there is that relationship. First and foremost, it's a spiritual father, spiritual son. The, the, the parish priest hears the confessions of his community and, and, de and, and spiritually edifies his community. Hopefully, uh, the parish priests look to their bishop for encouragement, for support, for, for direction in a particular area. Whether, 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 if there's a question of a canonical issue in a community, um, they call the local bishop, and if the bishop is not quite sure of the answer, he, call, <laughs> he, he calls the professor of canon law. Um, there may be a pastoral situation in the community that's delicate and he, he may have not have faced that before in his life. He'll call the bishop and hopefully the bishop will have ha had enough experience where he can advise him how to handle the situation so that for, for, the, right. for the best of the community. Now, the relationship that you described uh, a little while ago about between priest and the parish council, is it absolutely similar and what are the differences between the bishop and his council on the diocesan level and then the Archdiocese, mm -hmm. North and South America in our, in our particular case, and its lay bodies, which would you care to, to, to tell us? Well, each, are each, they similar or each, and what are they? They are similar. Each bishop has a diocesan council, All which right. is elected by the uh, General All Assembly. Lay or They're lay at, clergy and lady together, and clergy it's a mixture of appointments by the bishop and those elected at the, at the local uh, General Assembly of the um, Diocesan, uh, a diocesan assembly. Is their relationship and, and this, the same? As yes, they support. Council? Yes, they support the bishop. They share his dreams for the for the uh, for the uh, for the progress of the diocese. On an archdiocesan level, of course, there's a, the, the clergy laity congress, which meets biennially um, uh, in various parts of the archdiocese. Uh, there's the synod of bishops, of course, that is responsible uh, for, uh, that, that together with the Archbishop, who is the president of the Synod, has the ultimate responsibility for, for the Archdiocese and, mm -hmm. and, and final word on all issues of faith and uh, dogma and canon law. The Archdiocesan Council uh, is a body uh, that uh, advises the Archbishop on administrative matters uh, and together with the Synod of Bishops um, uh, are the two <laughs> Guide and lead, uh, right. and lead the community on a national, on a national basis. Yes, I would like to um, uh, add to that that um, here one sees the conciliar nature of the church. I mean, we within the Orthodox Church stress that the church uh, is a council, uh, in that in order um, to function. Uh, in a way that is true to its essence, it has to function as a council where all together on, in all levels, um, starting of course from uh, in our particular uh, situation where we are uh, a province of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, the Ecumenical Patriarchate has the uh, Holy Synod of Bishops which constitute it which of course is the highest uh, council for our jurisdiction, and then the various provinces of which the Archdiocese of North and South America is one, functions uh, as a council. The diocese um, comprised of the bishop and his presbyters function as a council. In other words, together they, they govern the church. Uh, and this is reflected as well in the parish where the, the priest, the presbyter, and the parish council uh, function as a council or should function as a council uh, where together uh, they, they serve the Lord by uh, and they try communicating to reach together. And they try to consensus, they try to rule as by consensus absolutely, primarily absolutely, yes. and determination. This is the goal. Talking about consensus and these, these councils, um, can you tell us about the biennial clergy lady congress where every two years, at least, and again in our jurisdiction, in our faith, in our church, uh, uh, every two years 
the major bodies of the church, the right. major institutions, mm -hmm. and representatives from all the councils come together. Would right. you care to tell us about this? Well, at, at the Biennial Congress, as you said, the church comes together from um, Canada, Central and South America, and of course the United States. Right. Every community is uh, represented by four representatives, the parish priest, the president of the parish council, and, and um, two other uh, representatives from the parish council. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what minimum, is, is it minimum? It's four. No, is it's, it at minimum that they can have more, or is it this is what's required? No, four is the, the requirement. I see. Uh, oh, up to four, I should say. Up to up four. Up to four. Uh, right. Parish priest, president of the parish council, and two other members, either from the parish council or elected from the general assembly of the community. And they come together, all of the parishes, every two years, and they, they, they uh, receive a report from all of the institutions of the archdiocese. They hear the archbishop's state of the church address, and they plan the future of the church for the next two years. They formulate the budget of the, of, of the archdiocese. Uh, and discuss matters of, um, of the communities. The and the, uh, these bodies are, perhaps we can talk about them, we have the uh, Archdiocesan Council, we have the, the Philoptochus. of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, we have the, the Philoptochus. For, for our broader audience, the Archons of the Ecumenical <coughs> Patriarchate is the body of lay. Of lay, leaders. Uh, uh, the, leaders mm -hmm. that are supportive of the Ecumenical Patriarchate mm -hmm. uh, um, in Constantinople. Right. Uh, and then we have we the have National Philoptochus, which is the women's charitable mm -hmm. organization. Then we have the National Archi Forum of Musicians mm -hmm. uh, that uh, represent the directors of our choirs from throughout the archdiocese. We have the Young Adult League, uh, the, which means exactly that, the young adults of our community that, that, that meet uh, every year and biennially together with the Clergy Lady Congress. Um, and then you have the institutions such as this institution. Such as Hellenic College Holy Cross, St. Basil's Academy. The orphanages, the, orphanages, the elderly, the homes, nursing homes, right. etc. the major... It, it's, it's the entire body of the church of the coming church. together now. with this, the head of the church, who is the Archbishop, who is the President of the Synod. Can, can you identify for us uh, major turning points that have occurred, I understand this uh, This has been happened since 1931 or so, was the first clergy lady congress? This is the 30, 30th or 31st uh, this coming July. So it was 1930, yeah. 1931 that right. the first one happened every two years. Uh, have, are they, what is the, is the major direction, do they give a major direction to the church? Can you identify major decisions? Well, I think um, decisions such as um, <clears throat> uh, administrative uh, decisions, uh, uh, how the budget is formulated, how monies are spent are, are decided at the Clergy right Lady Congress, okay, and various directives are given to the various Archdiocesan departments. Uh, uh, Go Telecom, for example, didn't exist 20 years ago or 15 years ago. It came into existence right. and, and it's done such so well. And every Congress, uh, a report is presented to the Clergy Lady Congress and a certain amount of money is budgeted towards this ministry. Uh, and of course, all of the parishes get together and, and, and uh, uh, have a, uh, the opportunity to vote and to speak about every ministry. And then the representatives go back to their communities, give a report of what is happening nationally, and hopefully getting the local communities to support this national ministry. I might say that um, uh, there is also the possibility for um, getting the pulse of the, the church at the uh, biennial uh, clergy lady congress where um, one hears the the um, uh, the agony which some of the uh, parishes may be experiencing but even the the hopes for the future um, and as a member of the faculty uh, here at holy cross i was uh, together with my colleagues engaged in a uh, fairly lengthy series of um, uh, meetings over a period of two years where we planned uh, what we're calling the, the a theological agenda for the 21st century where um, together we are trying to look ahead to the future uh, to see how the church can uh, confront um, the challenges the 21st century presents us with and of course these uh, reports have been circulated widely mm -hmm. uh, among our bishops and uh, presbyters and lay people and this is an ongoing process we are continuing these deliberations Dr. can you identify points of 
tension that have occurred, points of conflict that have occurred between clergy and laity on these bodies that we have presented, both in the local parish, diocese and archdiocese, uh, and, re and their resolutions and how they were resolved. And Your Grace, please comment or, or join us. Well, I think uh, we, we, we are trying to identify some of the problem areas uh, in the lives of our parishes. For instance, um, one of the problems uh, is, is the, the increasing numbers of um, uh, mixed marriages. Uh, not that that is uh, necessarily a problem, uh, but it does present the church with uh, a certain challenge, uh, how to receive those who are not of the Orthodox faith into the communion of the Orthodox Church without their uh, actually being orthodox and making them feel welcome and at home. Uh, what, are, what are the points of, of, of conflict? What, can you identify some for, for somebody that, uh, uh, that marries outside the church and brings that spouse well, there, in? There is the ethnic, for instance, uh, dimension uh, of many of our parishes where uh, those who are not of the uh, you know, Great the Greek the ba <clears throat> background uh, might feel uh, a bit strange uh, in our uh, environment, or certainly uh, the language uh, problem, the fact that uh, we still use... And there is tension between the needs of those people and what the, the clergy feels ought to be is this what we're trying to? Well, what are you trying certainly to say? we cannot ignore the fact that there is still a very large uh, segment of our uh, communities that are Greek speaking, and uh, ministry has to be offered to them as well. Uh, and then, of course, there is a, a reluctance uh, to um, uh, abandon what we feel is our heritage. And so this is a, a problem that uh, is, is with us and uh, which we are trying to uh, address mm -hmm. in as realistic a way as possible. How do we address and, and then, it? How and do then, we what, and then what, what, what happens in a, in a local parish? You see, um, uh, there could, you, you spoke about conflict. Uh, uh, there could be conflicts between the relationship in, between the parish priest and the laity on the parish council. Uh, oftentimes, the, 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 the parish priest is not offering the leadership that is, that is so much requested and required by the community. Uh, more often, uh, you get laity that come on to um, the parish councils, not to support the priest in building the body of the church, but come on for other reasons. And, and, and there are personality conflicts uh, in, uh, in the parish council. Instead of doing the work of the Lord, it becomes a, it becomes a battleground for, for, for political and personal um, uh, issues. And I think that, that is a major issue that the, that the Orthodox Church here has to deal with. Uh, what is the community? What are we here for? And, um, uh, and how is it being addressed, uh, it's being both a, on a local and, and national level or diocesan level? We're trying to uh, institute the parish council seminars. Uh, each diocese is trying to do that. Uh, there are, uh, on, on a diocesan level, each parish priest now is required to call the members, the candidates for the parish council prior to the elections, speak to them about the church, go through the uniform parish regulations, uh, remind them what they're there for and tell them that, look, membership on this, uh, on this uh, uh, body is a privilege and you're there to, to, uh, to project the faith and to help the, uh, the, to do the work of the church. You Vice mentioned before, uh, um, and I, I didn't want to get away from mm -hmm. it, uh, what are some of the major uh, thing, um, decisions at, at one of these clergy laity congresses? And I, I must uh, say the decision in 1978 uh, where the Congress um, uh, reformulated the Constitution, the charter of the Archdiocese, uh, and, and of course sent it to the Ecumenical Patriarchate for final ratification, which created the diocesan synodical system here in this country. That was a very big decision that was made. Mm -hmm. that, uh, the process that you were just talking about now, is there a vice, is there, is there a vice versa of that? Is there the, 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 the opposite where uh, the needs, the particular needs of the changing communities are filtering, for instance, here in this place and affect your training yes, of the future parish priests? Is that the case also that that as the as the as the lay people have to change, also the training of the priest, mm -hmm. the co the has congregation to is changing. And I always tell the students that the congregation you're facing Sunday after Sunday is a lot different than the congregation that I faced 20 years ago. Uh, 
-hmm. And as uh, Dr. Patsaba said, there are many converts to, to our church. There are many uh, inner church weddings that, that, that come to us uh, from, from, Catholic, from the Catholic Church and from Protestant churches. So we have to train our students here to be sensitive to that fact, to be sensitive to the pastoral needs of those individuals to formulate sermons on Sunday which are going to, to, to not only to be very informative of what the Orthodox Church is, who we are, uh, and, and, and where we are going as a community. And of course, Dr. Patsavis can speak to you about the field education program. I was that, just going uh, to say, yes, because it's not just what you're going to say, right. it's also what right. example That's right. you are giving practically in the field, in everyday life. The field education is uh, the prime example of contextual education where Besides the, the formal training that students receive in the classroom, uh, they're provided with the opportunity to experience uh, all aspects of ministry throughout three years of uh, training here. Uh, they begin in the parish where they, they teach Sunday school, work with the youth. Then they move into hospital ministry where for an entire year they uh, visit um, people who are in hospitals, nursing homes. Uh, and uh, then they are, uh, afford an opportunity to reflect uh, theologically upon the significance of this kind of ministry and the kind of problems that um, uh, it, it uh, uh, creates. And then it moves on to other uh, non-parish uh, types of ministry. We have a prison ministry uh, program where... Could you enumerate them because I have 45 seconds? Left. Certainly. <laughs> uh, prison ministry, we have the action line, the orthodox action line where uh, students can telephones and answer uh, all hotline. kinds of questions. And we have a, a vibrant uh, campus ministry program. Uh, here in the greater Boston area we have over 60 uh, colleges and universities and we have a number of students involved in ministering to the needs of Orthodox students there. So much left unsaid always, <laughs> but it, these, these programs are a good beginning. I'm, I'm very grateful for your insights. Thank, Thank you. you. The Orthodox Church is the place for prayer and worship. It is where the priest and faithful communicate spiritually and socially, and work together towards the advancement of Orthodox Christianity and the projection of the faith to the world. I'm Yanis Simonidis for Illuminations. You've been watching Holy Cross Live. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>